In this session, we will discuss the MinFi packets, which is a package for handling data from uh, DNA methylation microarrays. So let me start by introducing DNA methylation. DNA methylation is a chemical modification of the C base that in humans only occurs in a CBG context. That means a C followed by a G in the human genome. Uh, there are 28 million of such CBGs, and uh, these Cs can either be methylated or be unmethylated. In a single cell, uh, the methylation state is binary, or it actually has three values because we have uh, two different chromos we have two copies of each chromosome. But uh, think of it as binary. But when we profile a collection of cells, we don't necessarily have uh, have to have that all the cells have the same meth methylation state as at a given CBG. That means that the outcome of a methylation measurement is something we can think of as the methylation percentage or the beta values, which is a number also called a beta value, which is a number between zero and one. The purpose of studying DNA methylation is to uh, uh, understand how DNA methylation changes, uh, it changes and associated with, for example, a phenotype or disease status. A popular platform for studying DNA methylation is a 450K microarray, and it's popular because it's relatively comprehensive and it's cheap. By relative comprehensive, I mean that we have 28 million CBGs in the human genome, and the 450K array measures 480,000 of those. Let's start off uh, this session here by uh, loading the packets and uh, loading GeoQuery and start uh, downloading a data set that contains a 450K uh, data set. When you use the MinFi packets, we are particularly interested in uh, IDAT files, which are raw uh, uh, scanning uh, files from the Illumina platform. And these files are available, are, if they're available, they're available as supplementary material. Uh, that's not, the, they're not available for all uh, uh, 450k submissions, only for some of them. Uh, but I found one here that's interesting, uh, which is a study where they're trying to understand how, whether or not DNA methylation changes are associated with uh, acute mania. So they took a number of individuals who were hospitalized for acute mania, obtained serum from them and profiled uh, the serum on the 450k array. And then they also have a number of unaffected controls. Well, let's start off by downloading the supplementary uh, files. This is a big download, it's gonna take a little while. We've now downloaded the data set and uh, we see that there are actually two supplementary uh, 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 files. What we're really interested in is uh, this file called underscore raw.tar, that is an archive containing the IDAT files. So first we're going to unpack the archive, and inside uh, the directory that has been created, uh, we have a list of IDAT files. We see that uh, there are some files called underscore GIN for green, and, and some files called underscore red, and otherwise, aside from the green and the red, they have the same name. Uh, for IDAT files for the 450K array, we are gonna get uh, one file for each color channel, so there's gonna be two files for each sample. Now, MinFi currently does not support uh, reading in uh, compressed IDAT files, so we are gonna uh, decompress uh, the files. Oh, uh, we see here that uh, I have uh, not cleaned up uh, from when I ran the code a little while ago. Uh, there's a mixture of uh, compressed and uncompressed files. Uh, and um, so we don't have to decompress them, uh, but um, we can just read them in uh, using uh, a convenience function from the Winfrey package called read.450k.experiment, which reads in all IDAT files in the directory. We have now read the files into something called an RG set that we will uh, uh, look at in detail uh, a little uh, later. But it's essentially something that looks like an expression set containing the red and the green color channel. Now, the problem we have right now is that we got all of the data, 
but we don't have any phenotype data associated with these samples. There's nothing in the nothing in the phenotype data slot, which is not surprising. We just read in the files, and the sample names doesn't help us very much because uh, these codes here contains no information about which samples were hybridized under which conditions. To uh, get the, uh, the the phenotype data, we will uh, now download the original GU um, process data because that data set has phenotype information associated with it. This is also going to take a while. We have now uh, downloaded and passed uh, the data file. That was a lot of work for getting a few columns of phenotype data. So we get the phenotype data from the original uh, geo uh, matrix. And we're only really interested in four columns. Uh, I've done a little bit of homework and looked at, at the entire thing. Uh, and uh, these are the four columns. It contains a, a little bit of information about the, the samples. And then we know uh, the diagnosis and the sex of the uh, different samples. So we're going to clean up this data frame a little bit. We're going to change the uh, column names and we're going to clean up uh, the uh, group and the, uh, and the sex column. Uh, to something that looks like this, that we are now going to merge uh, in together with the empty uh, Fino uh, data slot from the Archie set we had created. So first I uh, continue the cleanup. I clean up my sample names uh, for my Archie set. Uh, and I make sure that my phenotype data thing here has the right uh, row names. Then I uh, reorder things. So now I have my my sample names from my Archie set. Uh, let me just take the head of this. And I have the head of my PD uh, object. And uh, these are in the same order. I've guaranteed that now. And now I'm ready to uh, assign it. And I have a ready to roll uh, Archie set. So that was a little bit of an advanced usage of GeoQuery. Uh, and uh, we will uh, now return to our methylation uh, array. So the first thing you want to do with most microarray data is you want to normalize it. And in MinFree, we have a set of functions starting with preprocess uh, that uh, does that implements various methods for preprocessing a 450k microarray. Uh, in this case here, I'm going to pick the method called preprocess quantile, uh, which I call directly on the RG set. And I get something back, back called a genomic ratio set, so I'm going to call it a GR set. This function does a couple of things. Uh, it normalizes the data, uh, but it also uh, maps the data to the genome. Uh, this is a this is, this is a process of assigning each probe to a given location on the genome where that particular CBG is located. So now we have pre-processed the array and uh, we get something back that is essentially a summarized experiment set. It's called a genomic ratio set. It's called the, 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 the thing, the genomic thing means that we have mapped uh, things to the genome and the ratio uh, has to do with uh, what kind of methylation measurements we are storing in, in, the, in the object. In this case here, it's uh, beta values. And we can see we have 485,000 uh, measurements. We can get the location of the, uh, of the um, uh, CBGs by calling uh, G-ranges on it. And we get a, a G-ranges detailing the C on the forward strand uh, where the methylation, uh, uh, where which the C in the CBG that may or may, that may or may not be uh, methylated. So CBGs are depleted in the human genome, but they tend to cluster together into entities that we call CBG islands. For uh, many reasons, uh, researchers are interested in knowing when they are looking at a CBG whether or not it's a CBG inside an island or inside an area that's close to an island. These areas are called CBG shores. A little bit further away, there's CBG shelves. And if you're really far away from a CBG island, 
you are an open C CPG. Um, you can get this information by uh, uh, using get island status that returns a vector of whether or not the CVG is an open C, an island, and so on and so forth. Finally, now that we have normalized the data, we can get beta values uh, out of the GR set, and uh, we are now ready for analysis. There are two ways we can analyze this data. Uh, one is uh, basically using the lemma packets to find differentially methylated positions or single CVGs that are differentially methylated. But for bi both for biological and statistical reasons, we uh, might be particularly interested in clusters of CVGs that change in the same direction. In the MinFi packets, we have a function called bumphunter that interfaces to the bumphunter packets and that allows us to discover such clusters. Uh, there are other methods uh, out there for doing uh, that particular step. So that concludes what I have to say about Minfi. There's uh, a lot more to be read about, to, to be seen in the, uh, in, in the uh, vignette for the packets.